Sometimes I start talking before the video starts, so you have to pause for a second till things catch up. Blazer! Diesel. Somebody just asked me, I forget who it was, what the heck are those hubs? And I said, those are worn locking hubs. And I've got my Suburban and my Blazer parked side by side. And it's March and it's snowing. Why is it snowing in March? Because sometimes it comes in like the lion. So this, I forget. If this is a Dana 44 or a GM 10 bolt, <laughs> what's the difference? One spline on the axle. What a pain. All nice and greased. No matter how often I grease it, it's never enough. There's always water in the joints. So this is a worn hub that somebody installed before I bought this truck. Normally they come with automatic locking hubs, which work great until they don't and you're stuck and they won't engage. So you rev it up and the rear wheels are spinning and all of a sudden this front hub decides to lock up and bang. So I got tired of it on this Suburban when it locked up and I was on a bit of a hill and it was sheer, sheer ice and I could not get out of my driveway. So I put on the locking hubs. This one came with the hubs. They're 75 bucks. Do not buy the mile marker, they're junk. What does a locking hub do? Well, there's probably a video on YouTube that shows them in action. But when you turn the knob, now this is a quick acting one, all it's doing is thread it inside, it's turning, and clockwise, you turn it like this, you lock it like that, it's turning and pushing teeth that engage on the other side where the axle comes through the hub and you've got teeth that are just separated. And when you turn that knob like that, click, you're engaging the teeth so that they mesh. Now the mile marker hubs that I removed from this Suburban, they were brand new and they lasted <laughs> five minutes. Junk, they sent me some repair parts, garbage. Made in some <laughs> unpronounceable language from some country or whatever, total garbage. Maybe the old ones were good in the 70s and 80s, but the new ones, garbage. Nice and shiny on the outside, garbage on the inside. So I took them off and I put on some genuine worn hubs. Now, these look different and they are, but they do the exact same thing. This is one model of worn hub. They had an old one that had a giant knob on the outside. There was a Suburban that got scrapped when they built a big bus factory. Too bad it was sitting there for years with no motor and the guy thought it was valuable and it was gone. So you lock the hub by just doing this. Click, now the axle is locked to the hub. The axle shaft comes through and it just misses locking to the hub by just a little bit. When you turn that knob, the two halves lock together. And then you've got four wheel drive as long as you've got the transfer case engaged inside the truck, which sends power from the transmission through the front drive shaft to the front differential and then to both axles. So you've got to run around to the truck Engage your lever inside into four high or four low. Lock your hubs like that. When you want to unlock them, you go counterclockwise until it says free, which you can't read because I've got fluid film everywhere. And you back up a few feet to disengage the parts inside the transfer case. New vehicles have it all electronic on the dash. Some of them even do it just by detecting wheel motion with sensors. These are the classic worn all metal hubs that I bought at a swap meet for 10 bucks and it's a lot of work to get these on or off you've got to <laughs> undo a snap ring that you can't undo so i drilled a hole somewhere maybe i can see it on the other side i drilled a hole in the gmc it's the chevrolet i drilled a hole in my hub so that i can release that c-clip because you try grab it with a couple of screwdrivers and all you do is end up busting the screwdrivers and you just chase the thing around so i drilled a hole there it is right there and i measured very carefully and i drilled a hole right under the c-clip so that i can lift up one edge of it and get it out of there you think it's easy ha! it ain't easy so these hubs lock by turning the knob 350 degrees you go almost all the way around. These are the slow acting ones. So free is there and lock is there, but you gotta go all the way around. It's a slow acting thread. Kind of like a fine thread and a coarse thread. Light bulbs have coarse threads and fancy lawyers have fine threads. Bada boom. So lock, unlock. And all that's doing on the inside is turning threads, just like on a light bulb and pushing 
toothed cog, would you call it, to engage with the axle that's coming through the hub. And there's probably a video of someone maybe doing a better job describing it. So now my hubs are unlocked. And based on this weather, yikes, I just watched a good video this morning. Nick's Garage. He's a great guy north of Montreal. He was building up a 455 Pontiac with two four barrels. Yes! And it caught fire on the dyno. Watch the video. The guy that makes the videos is really good. Does great productions with multiple cameras and editing software. And I don't edit nothing. I just wipe my greasy fluid film gloves on my 1010 grimy jeans. Crank that bit up! stinking button we just open the hood every day open the hood every day plug in my glow plug relay solenoid laser suburban and the g30 van that i brought back from colorado via florida towing my harley davidson anybody live in maine that can do me a registration favor let me know if you live in, no, not Maine, if you live in New Hampshire. Billy lives in Maine. No more bumpers, Billy. If you live in New Hampshire, send me an email at Corvair Wild. I need your help to register my Harley Davidson. Because you know something? Riding season is right around the winter. Oh, yeah. Got nice Chirons. Only 135,000 miles, 210,000 kilometers on that one. Almost 300,000 on this one, 500 and change thousand kilometers. All right, gotta go. Gotta go see a lawyer and pay him some money. Don't you love that? <laughs>